Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will go over differences between Amazon EC2 and GCP's compute engine. Now, these differences are not significant, but if you work in both environments, it may be a gotcha, something that stumps you for a little bit. But we'll start off, we'll keep, we'll start creating our EC2s as we talk, and we'll create our GCP uh, instances. And we won't add any special configurations to any of these because what we want to demonstrate are two key differences that I have found with uh, these instances. One of them is naming our instances. There's a gotcha there. Which one provides the most flexible environment in our naming? Usually when you name a device, it's just a naming convention that's already established through company policy and that's fine what about if that company policy changes what do you do then or let's say you create uh, these instances and you decide okay I'm, i will run so and so on this instance what about if that changes for example if you're running docker you could run anything on an instance well what happens then so for example, if I want to rename my AWS instance, I could do whatever I want. Rename, rename, change the name. I don't like this name. I hate this name. Call me this, call me that. You could do whatever you want. Very, very simple. And as I've always said, name your instances because you will forget what they do. If you have two, three, or more instances in your account or in your company's account, you will have a hard time remembering what each one does. GCP, where are you? How do I rename you? Where do I go? Where do I go to fill out forms to rename my instance? Help me. How do I do this? <laughs> it's impossible to rename your GCP instance. You get one shot, one shot only. You get one shot, Of course, one shot only. you can always rebuild the instance. You can make an image out of it and build a new one with the correct name, but that's a pain. So I don't know why they do not allow but you get the statement right when you're building the instance under GCP. It says name is, name permanent. is permanent. So let's talk about IP addressing and why it's important and who gives you grief and who gives you freedom. Here's the thing. Maybe you've noticed this. And if you're only labbing and you're building and destroying, as I've recommended so many times, well, good for you. Maybe you don't notice this. But let's say you built an instance and you said, I will continue tomorrow. So you shut it down so that you don't keep paying and incurring costs for it. And when you come back tomorrow, you realize when you bring this instance back up that the IP address has changed. Well, how about if you were working on a website and you created DNS entries that point to that previous IP address? What do you do then? Okay, now you have to go back to DNS, whichever one you use, GoDaddy, if you use Route 53, if you use Google's DNS, it doesn't matter which one. You have to go back to that DNS provider and make the change and update that subdomain or domain that you configured what a pain in the neck i hate wasting time so the way to get around this or the way that you should work with this is to assign a static ip address so you can shut down restart do whatever you want and not lose that ip address but here's the issue when you do this in one environment, it's very easy. When you do it in another environment, it's not so easy. GCP 
makes this very simple. Very simple. I really enjoy, really enjoy this. Assigning IP addresses has been something that I tend to forget and I tend not to think about because I always say, okay, I'll assign an IP address later. But as you're building and going along, things happen, things change. In GCP, you can convert your assign IP address, the one that gets automatically assigned when you create an instance. You can convert that to a static IP address with one click. And you can name that IP address as well. That is amazing. Google simply calls this reserve static IP. So those are the two options that you have. You can, you have the static IP or IP address assigned and you could just convert it or reserve it for your instance. It makes it very simple. And when you look at the details of your instance, it is all there. Do not have to make any DNS changes. How about with AWS? Well, with AWS, it's not that easy. Okay, so I'm in my instance details. I'm in networking. Where do I go? How do I convert this IP address? Under network interface. Where are you? Okay, where, where, taking where, where a look. Where are you? Where, where, hmm. where are you? Where are you? You know, it's, where, it's where, something where, where I you? can't even find it. I'm looking for it, but it's not that obvious where I need to make the change because they've changed the menu around. So it being November, 2020, we have new menu entries to make the change. So where do I go? I'm just going back and forth. It, I'm in, going in a circle here, as you can see. I can't find where I need to make the change. But once you find it, it becomes easier. If you look in the documentation, you will see that AWS tells you that a static IP address cannot be converted into an elastic IP. Convert elastic now. IP is what they call a static IP. Or, and you see, you have to go through hoops in order to get this to work. You have to create the elastic IP first, then you have to assign it to your instance. So in this video, this instance, because we went through a, a shutdown and a restart, that's two IP addresses. And now we assigned it an elastic IP address, three IP addresses. So if you were working on something and you're making all these DNS changes, that's just a pain in the neck. Because if you made these DNS changes on the same day, it could be that the second change you make takes forever to populate. Now with the GCP instance, we only had to have two IP addresses. But if you do things the right way from the get go, you assign these static IP addresses, but who does that? If you're developing and you're testing, that's probably the last thing you think about. And if you have a network background, this is second nature to you. But for somebody that does development work is a programmer. They're usually not thinking about IP addresses. They're just thinking about coding and developing, which is what they should be doing. The network guys need to be worried about the IP addresses. Well, that wraps this up. There is no one that is better or worse than the other. There are differences. As we notice here in AWS, naming a instance is a wonderful thing. You can do it as many times as you want. In GCP, not so much. It's not a great setting. 
But in GCP, assigning an IP address and converting a static IP address to make it permanent and not ephemeral, it's a great thing. In AWS, it's not such a great thing. So in the end, you can't have it all. You get used to one way of doing it, fine. But if you're a consultant and you work on multiple environments, these are little things that you have to keep in mind every time you work on a project. Well, I hope you learned something with this video. Please give me a like. Please subscribe. Please hit that notification bell so that you know when I'm providing more videos.